Okay, let's just pretend for a fucking second that my life is a hot mess. Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to start another Stephen King reading vlog. I'm going to be reading The Body by Stephen King, which is very short, which I'm happy about. I read 112263 by Stephen King. Hmm. I don't know, last summer. And now I'm ready to dive into another one. I love that it's really short. This one is adapted into the 1986 classic film Stand By Me. It's an iconic exploration of friendship, adventure, and an unforgettable coming of age story. And I'm just really excited to dive in. So it's going to be a short vlog because it's a short book and obviously I don't want to spoil you guys but I thought I would take you along anyway so enjoy One thing that's interesting about this book is it's not broken up how normal chapters are. There are chapters, but it's all one big story. And then the chapters are just labeled like this, like chapter one, chapter two. So it's in text chapter dividers, chapter three, um, which is interesting. I guess they didn't want to waste space. So I kind of like that. There is this different text in here, different font. Um, oh, okay. So it looks like it was something published in like a newspaper or something like that. Um, we shall see. All I know is it's about a body. So it says 12 year old Gordy Lachance and his three friends set on a quest to find a boy from a nearby town who has disappeared. They search for his body along the railroad tracks during a miserable hot summer and soon learn that monsters are not looking in their closets but live in the hearts of people. I also do love the cover. It's very striking. I like the colors. I like the silhouettes. Um, I like the font and stuff like that. Um, and I don't think I have ever seen Stand By Me. Is that a crime? I think it is. It's like, I kind of feel like I've seen it, but I kind of haven't. Um, but I read the first chapter and I thought it was very interesting. Um, it's a short one and it says the most important things are the hardest things to say. They are the things you get ashamed of because words diminish them. Words shrink things that seem limitless when they were in your head to no more than living size when they're brought out. But it's more than that, isn't it? The most important things lie too close to wherever your heart is buried, like landmarks to a treasure your enemies would love to steal away. And you may make revelations that cost you dearly, only to have people look at you in a funny way, not understanding what you've said at all, or why you thought it was so important that you almost cried while you were saying it. That's the worst, I think. When the secret stays locked within, not for want of a teller, but for the want of an understanding ear. I was 12 going on 13 when I first saw a dead human being. It happened in 1960, a long time ago, although sometimes it doesn't seem that long to me, especially on the nights when I wake up from dreams where the hail falls into his open eyes. What an opening chapter. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's read this and I will let you know my thoughts, but so far, strong beginning. Ugh. 
Good morning, friends. I wanted to update you on The Body by Stephen King. I read very little last night. I read um, probably um, 15 pages, and then I read a few pages this morning, so I am on page 18. Very slow going, um, and I think the reason why is because it is info dumpy in the beginning. Um, as in there are obviously four characters. So you have Gordy, who is like the narrator of the story and his three friends. And then you have their nicknames and then you have their parents and then you have their siblings. So it's just like a lot of names and you're just trying to get grounded in the world and what's going on. Um... I think after like 20 or so pages, I'll be in the world. I took some time this morning and wrote a little like <laughs> character list. So for the longest time, I mean, yes, I read the back of the book, but I didn't even say Gordy's name in here a lot. So I didn't even realize that like Gordy was the narrator. Um, Cause it just says like, I was able to or you know I did this and I did that and you're like okay who are I <laughs> um and saying like we had a tree house and he starts naming all these other people and yeah so I just had to go through it again a few pages this morning um so you have Gordy like I said the narrator Teddy who um poor guy like his dad was um, abusive and like burned his ears and then you have Chris and then you have Vern who is actually the person that heard about the body um, from well I guess it's been on the radio of course but um, he overheard like his brother and I guess his brother's friend talking about it yeah so they're up in their tree house and they decide that they're gonna camp over you know one of the boys house like camp over like in the tent but really they're gonna go search for this body so um it's the classic you tell your mom that you're going to this person's house for dinner and then we'll tell them that we're going to your house for dinner and then we'll be in the tent and then you know in the middle of the night we're going to take off and we're going to go to the railroad tracks and find this body and then we'll have our picture in the paper and all of that so um yeah, so the story is good. It just takes, like, I felt this is only my second Stephen King. So with 11-22-63, it took me a minute to, like, get into the story because that one is obviously set in the 60s and this one is set also in the 60s. And I know that characters overlap in his world and places and stuff like that. Um, my friend P Penny shared, like, this Stephen King universe map almost like which characters went where and which towns or what and how it all intertwines i need to try to look that up on the internet actually but anyway reading this not very far um just getting grounded in the story but hoping to finish this today because i actually have other reading plans for tomorrow so I have to knock this out today but first I'm gonna finish my coffee I'm gonna play some Animal Crossing I'm gonna do my Bible study and then I have to post some Instagram stuff and then my only other main goal of the day is to finish this book so that's what you're in store for also I should probably change to get ready for the day because like I said I just woke up it's early my dog was ready for me to be up today
I am currently on page 42, chapter 9, and I just um, finished reading this creative story that Gordy wrote. Um, so that's what was in the different font. Um, I didn't really know what I was reading. I mean, it did say that, um, it said Stud City by Gordy Lachance, originally published in Greenspun Quarterly, issue 45, fall 1970, used by permission. And then it was like this completely different story with completely different characters. And I was like, how does this relate? But then I got to page 34 and it talked about, um, where did it say? Oh, they see one little boy in a yellow plastic raincoat walking up the sidewalk, carefully stepping in all the puddles. And I was like, I know what that's from. So I kept reading the story. It was it was long. Um, it was quite long. So I was wondering how it was going to connect. And then after that, it said um, that it was the product of an undergraduate creative writing workshop. So I guess that's what that was. Um, yeah. But I kind of feel like that's a story in another King book that I'm just not aware of yet. So, like I said, this is only my my second Stephen King. I don't know much about the Stephen King universe or how the stories intertwine or anything like that. Um, I just know it because I've seen the movie, the old movie, not the new remakes or whatever. Um, and I've read 112263. Um, but other than that, I know next to nothing. So I am a Stephen King noob and that's all I really have to say about that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to continue reading. It's so nice outside. It's going between like sunny and cloudy, sunny and cloudy. So I'm just enjoying the weather sitting out here. Charlie's out here with me and that's the plan. I'm going to sit here and finish this off. Um, about there. So 42 pages. It is, um, 179 pages. So I'm a little less than halfway. I'm on page 71, chapter 13. And yeah, this is definitely like a coming of age story because while I wish it was more about them like actually hunting for the body, it's basically about them saying that they're gonna go look for this body and the trip to go look for the body. I also came across a part, um, they're at this like junkyard and Milo Pressman and his dog Chomper. Yeah, so I guess this happened and then 20 years later, Cujo happened. Um, yeah, very interesting. So another reference to something I vaguely know. Um, but yeah, so the only thing I will say is even though this is set in the 60s, it doesn't seem very believable for kids that are like 12 years old to talk to adults like this and then adults to talk to the kids like this. Like that's just not very believable. <laughs> so you have to suspend your disbelief a bit, but Let's go ahead and finish this up and I will share my final thoughts. All right, as expected, very short vlog. I just finished reading The Body and I quite enjoyed this one. So like I have said multiple times, this is my second Stephen King and it's technically a novella rather than like one of his novels. But I went from 11:22:63 to this one um and i haven't read one of his horror stories yet so that's also very interesting i really enjoyed this story there were times that i was kind of like i'm not really enjoying this part um the stories though the second story that gordy told us like his stories that he's been writing because he's an author and this is like his memoir um the first one what it what was it about uh, what was it called? Stud City. Didn't really like that. I was kind of like, what the heck am I reading? Um, now the second story he shared, they're making their way to find the dead body and his friend, they stop to kind of cool down and catch their breath. And one of them, one of his friends says, hey, tell us a story. So he tells them the story about this pie eating contest. And it was so gross, you guys. It was disgusting. I can't even explain how disgusting it was. If you are not okay reading about vomit, I highly recommend you stay away 
from that story. I would just skip it all together. And actually you could technically skip both stories because they do not tie in to the main story of the body. But because I don't know enough about the Stephen King universe, I don't know how they tie in overall. Um, but I really liked how each boy did feel very different from another. You're following, like I said, like the four boys and you do know a little bit about their families. You do know a little bit about their siblings and just kind of like how their life is. They're 12 years old. It's the weekend before Labor Day. Um, and they, like I said, they all lie to their parents to say they're camping or they're, you know, they have this tent in the field behind someone's house when really they're going to look for this dead body. And it takes them a while to get there because they're going on foot and it's like in the next town over. Um, but just, I don't know, it just felt so unique and so like quintessential coming of age, um, kind of like from being boys to men, even though they're only like 12. It was like that pivotal moment in their life, that pivotal moment where mentally they went from being boys to men. Um, very interesting. I loved that it was told, uh, the narrative style of it being, you know, in one of the characters is actually narrating the story. Like I said, like it's his memoir. Um, and I like that we find out what happens to all of them, you know, many years later after this one grand adventure. Um, and I like that it wasn't, what I didn't like about 112263 is it just dwelled on the details so much, but because this was a novella, it didn't have time to do that. And I loved it. So I rated the story a four out of five stars, because like I said, I do think I missed some references just because this is my second book, um, but I did catch the it reference. I did catch the Cujo reference. Um, of course, they blatantly said Cujo, so like, how could I miss that? Also, I checked and it actually is coming on Stars Friday morning at like eight o'clock or something in the morning. So I set a timer to record it because I want to watch the movie Stand By Me now. And I feel like I've seen it like when I was a kid or something, but as an adult, I've never seen it. But now having read the book, I want to watch the movie and, you know, compare the two. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Um, I think the only down parts were there were some like slower parts. There were like a little bit of details. And like I said, the stories didn't have to be in there. Um, but I'm glad that they were because it um, built in believability of the character that was telling us the story. So yeah, four out of five stars. If you're looking for a short Stephen King, I would definitely recommend this. There is some harmful language. I will say that there's that vomiting bit. Um, so do your own research before going into it. Um, because Stephen King does have problematic elements in his writing. He always has. I'm sure he always will. Um, from what I've heard, from what I've read, from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog. Like I said, I know it's short and sweet, but I really did enjoy this experience. And as I continue to read Stephen King books, I will vlog the experience. I still need to look up the map of like the Stephen King universe and see like different things. I probably need to like print that out. So anytime I read one of his books, I can like reference it. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'll try to pop in a picture of what I find so you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye!